Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We greet you all in Jesus' name. As we once again make our way into your spirit with the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nothing is as important as eternal security. Our days on the earth are like a little vapor. One minute you're here, the next minute you're gone. But before you go, God has sent us with the gospel to put you in the right direction. So that as your days on earth uh, come to an end, as you step into eternity, you will step on the right side of eternity. That's why we're here. To share the good news, the gospel of Jesus. To let you know how much God loves you. And to let you know what God did, compelled by his love for you. What was God, what was God compelled to do because he loves you is that God sent his son Jesus. And Jesus came to seek that which was lost. Jesus came for the lost sheep. God bless you. <laughs> Jesus came for the lost sheep. He came for a lost humanity. And the Lord Jesus comes to you today as well in the preaching of the gospel. As we come out with the gospel of Jesus Christ and as we tell you that Jesus is the Son of God, as we tell you that Jesus died and rose again, your conscience agrees with that. Nobody ever comes in contact with the Lord Jesus and remains the same. Nobody ever comes in contact with the gospel of Jesus Christ and remain the same. There are 2.3 billion Christians in the world today. And the reason why there's 2.3 billion Christians in the world today is because the Son of God died and rose again. And when you come in contact with the Son of God, who died and rose again, your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. Every person who's come in contact with Jesus never left that conversation the same. You will never live the same. If you take a couple of moments to take in the gospel, to listen to the good news, with a hearing of faith or you will never be the same the power of the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus shed on the cross or you will never be the same the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God into your mind into your spirit your soul your body your family, your spouse, husband, your wife, your children, your home, you will never be the same. Everyone who's ever been in contact with the Son of God, by the time you walk away from the conversation, you are made spiritually alive. You don't come in contact with life and you don't receive life yourself. Every person who met Jesus, when they met Jesus, he was to them what they needed him to be. There was a man who had leprosy. His skin was literally rotten away. 
he came to Jesus and he knelt before Jesus and worshipped him. You see, Jesus accepted worship because he is God. So Jesus touched this man who had leprosy and said to him, I am willing, be thou cleansed. And the man was cleansed of his leprosy. You can never come in contact with the Lord Jesus and remain the same. And so we thank God because God has allowed us to be put in trust with the gospel and we say grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God models that the United Kingdom has been moved away from him who called her into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. He says I marvel that you are so soon removed from him who has called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel know that there is any other gospel but there are those who will trouble you by perverting the gospel of Christ but though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which was preached in the early church fathers let him be a curse. As we have said before, so say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than the gospel of Jesus Christ as the Son of God who came to sacrifice his life on the cross for you and I, if anyone preach any other gospel other than that which you have received, let him be a curse, so says the word of God. For do I not persuade man or do I, do I please man or am I trying to please God? You see, as we come out to preach the gospel, we are not here to please man. We are here to please God. And so we stick to our guns. We stick to the gospel and the truth of the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus is the Son of God. We stick to that because we are not looking to please man, but to please God. And so we bring you the gospel of Christ. We bring you the gospel because the desire, desire and the will of God is that you should come to the knowledge of the truth. Anybody who has ever put their faith in Jesus Christ has never regretted it. Even when life gets tough, even when times get tough, anybody who's ever put their trust in the Lord Jesus has never regretted it. You will never regret that you came to the cross of Jesus. So I plead the blood of Jesus Christ, I plead the blood of Jesus into the very foundations of this here town of Odom for mass evangelism, for the preaching of the gospel, for soul winning, because the desire of the will of God is that none of us should perish, but that we should all come to the knowledge, the knowledge of the truth. You see, the truth is actually a person and this person has a name and his name is Jesus Christ. You could be the most educated person in the world, but if you've not come to the knowledge of who Jesus really is, you have not come to the truth. I plead the blood of Jesus into the very atmosphere and the heavens above Odin 
for the pulling down of principalities and powers, for the pulling down of spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places, for the pulling down of the rulers of the darkness of this age, and for the pulling down of those demonic strongholds holding you back from coming to the cross of Jesus. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ to the very gates of Adam, both the physical gates and the spiritual gates for the triumphant entry of the Son of God into the lives of the people of Odom. I speak the blood of Jesus and place the blood of Jesus at the very center of Odom, but the physical center and the spiritual center. I use the blood of Jesus, the voice of the blood of Jesus, to invite the people of Odom into the kingdom of God. If you are within the reach of my voice, if you can hear me, I speak the blood of Jesus into your heart and soul for the receiving of the gift of the Spirit of God. You can never live life as God intended without His Spirit. You cannot live the life of God without the Spirit of God. I speak the blood of Christ into every home in order for the peace of God to rule and reign in the homes of the people of Odom in the name of Jesus. You see, God's got so much love for you. He sends you His knowledge. God has so much love for you. He sends some knowledge in the form of the gospel. He sends you revelation in the form of the gospel. God's got so much love for you. He has certain things that He wants you to know about Him so you can have a relationship with him. He loves you so much and he wants you to know that justification of getting right with God or getting right with him can be done through the blood of Jesus and through the blood of Jesus Christ alone. You know whenever two people meet for any sort of relationship it can be a romantic relationship it can be a business relationship any kind of relationship you have to know the other person so you can relate to them that's common sense and that's basic enough every single one of us knows that if you're talking to a new person you try and get to know them first and as much information as they give up about themselves is the more you know who they are. The more information they give up about, about themselves is the more you know who they are and is the more you can relate to them. And it's the same thing with God. The more you have the knowledge of God the more you have the more knowledge of the nature of God, the more you can relate to Him. The more you can form a relationship with God's evil world. For the word of God to call this world a present evil world, it means that the world before this world was not an evil world. If this is a present evil world, that you, then you know that the world before was a past, good, sinless world. Do you see the connection between sin and the present evil world? Because I meet a lot of people, and people usually have the same questions. One of the major questions I get asked is, if God is love, 
then why is there evil in the world? If God is life, why are people dying in the world? And if God is love, why do we have people hating each other? But the word of God makes it very plain that there is a connection between sin and the present evil world. As we read from the book of Galatians, we hear that Jesus Christ gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil world. Humanity entered an evil world through the sin of Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve decided to rebel against the love of God, the door into an evil world was opened. Satan deceived humanity by making us think that we can live life without God. But the truth of the matter is you can never live your life without God. The reason why people drink is because there is an emptiness and a void inside us. And we are trying to fill that emptiness and that void inside us. But all those things. And yet only one thing can fit that particular space. And that one thing is a relationship with God. You can never live life without God. You can never do your life like how God intended for you to do without Him. So the Word of God gives us a connection between sin and the present evil world. The reason why humanity is the way it is today is because of the sinfulness of Adam and Eve. It's because Adam and Eve decided to rebel against the love of God. And when Adam and Eve decided to go against God, they did that on your behalf and on my behalf. So we are a humanity that's born already at odds with God. The Word of God says that we were born enemies in our mind by wicked works. Before you were born, you were already guilty before God. Before you were born, you were already hostile to God. Before you were born, you already had the sinfulness of Adam and Eve in you. Before you were born, you were born unrighteous, unholy, and born outside of the Garden of Eden. Because God confronts Adam and Eve about the eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They refuse to repent. They are kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And the entire human race is sent out of the Garden of Eden together with the first parents. And so the Word of God tells us that Jesus gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil world. There is a connection between this present evil world and the sin of man. The reason why the world has turned out the way it is and has today is because of man. The reason why people die, the reason why there's sickness and disease and illness, the reason why there is pestilence and pandemics and natural disasters and man-made disasters is because of the sinfulness of Adam and Eve. By the time Adam and Eve were beginning to have their children, these children were born with a nature of sin just like their father because we see in the story of Cain and Abel we see them killing each other there is a relationship between the sin of man and the present evil world our own sin as a humanity has brought the world to where it's at today our own sin as a humanity has so much perverted this world deformed it and changed it into something totally different because all of this started with our own thinking it started with a mind that was corrupted by this deception of satan 
Satan comes into the Garden of Eden. He's having a conversation with this with, with Eve, in fact. Where Adam was at that point, God knows. Adam could have been at the pot, and the snake is having his way with Adam's wife. Home. Adam could have been anywhere. But sin came into the human race through the deception of Satan. And when Adam and Eve decided in their own minds that they could do without God, see where it landed them. And it's just the same thing today. If anyone thinks that you can, if you think that you can live your life without God's guidance in your life, you see where that's going to land you. But the reason why the message is coming to you today is because of the love of God for you. God wants you to change your mind. God wants you to resume your faith in Him. God wants you to resume your trust in His Word. Adam and Eve were given the knowledge by God because God says any tree in the garden of Eden you are free to eat but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil don't eat it the day you eat of it you surely die but Adam and his wife decided to rebel against the love of God he decided to rebel against the love of God he changed his mind from what God told him to what the devil told him and the word of God comes to you today because God wants you to change your mind from what the devil told you to what he God told you now I know that a lot of people will protest and a lot of people will say to me but I never listened to the voice of the devil I've never had a conversation with the devil oh yes you did when you were in Adam and Eve, when the serpent was speaking to Adam, and when Adam listened to the voice of the serpent, you also listened to the voice of the serpent. When a pregnant woman goes through trauma, the baby in the womb goes through trauma as well. When a pregnant woman eats of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because Adam and Eve were pregnant with the entire human race at that time, the entire human race ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When God confronted Adam and Eve and they refused to repent and so he kicked them out of the Garden of Eden, that happened to the entire human race. So every single person born of a man and a woman is born already having listened to the voice of the serpent. But God brings knowledge to you today. God wants you to know you can change your mind. You can change your mind from a humanity that listened to the voice of the serpent. You can change your mind to become a humanity that listens the, to the voice of God. You can change your mind in repentance. You can come to the cross of Jesus in repentance and in humility. You can ask for the blood of Jesus to wash your sins away because that's the only way the guilt of sin is going to stop leaning on you. You know why you still feel the guilt of sin? Because you've not been to the cross of Jesus. I mean, after having done all the nice and good things that a decent human being is supposed to do, you still feel guilty before God until you come to the cross of Jesus. 
there is no amount of good works that will justify you before God because we hear from the word of God that knowing that a, a man is justified by Christ Jesus knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the flesh but by faith in Christ Jesus even so we have put our faith in Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ for by the works of the law shall the flesh be justified you can never be justified before God by what you can do because remember humanity died a spiritual death in the garden of Eden a dying man has nothing to offer to God a dying humanity has nothing to offer to God God said Adam and Eve any tree in the garden of Eden you're free to eat but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil if you eat of it you're going to die Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and when they did that they, their relationship with God died and they died in the spirit so you have absolutely nothing that you can offer God to reconcile back with him a dying or a dead humanity a spiritually dead humanity has absolutely nothing to offer him you could say to me oh well, I am a religious guy I pray so many times a day you can pray a million times a day but if you are dead in the spirit you are dead in the spirit you could say to me but I love my family and I do well by my family of course you're supposed to do well by your family but listen to this it doesn't matter what you do because if you're dead in the spirit you are dead in the spirit God says to Adam and Eve if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you are going to die so Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and they died a spiritual death instantly as they began to die a physical death gradually the reason why people die today is because of the sin of Adam and Eve that's the reason why people die today so if humanity is a spiritually dead humanity my question to you is when were you made alive that's the question I want to know from you God is the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit God is three in one and you are three in one yourself you are soul spirit and body yeah Father Son Holy Spirit soul spirit and body because you are made in the image of God so if you died your spiritual death in the Garden of Eden when were you made alive again because you could be doing religious works as a spiritually dead person you could be taking care of the homeless and that's a good thing to do but as a spiritually dead person you could be the nicest guy on the face of the planet but as a spiritually dead person you could be that one who loves their neighbor as themselves you know but even still as a spiritually dead person or you could be given to charity hundreds and thousands of pounds to charity but you could be doing your charity works as a spiritually dead person because if God say to Adam and Eve if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall die we know that Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because we see people dying today so when were you made alive again Shalom. when were you made alive again the only way you can be made alive again is at the cross of Jesus the blood of Jesus Christ is the only way you can be made alive again in your spirit the blood of Jesus is the only way you can ever have a relationship with the living and the true God the blood of Jesus is the only way that you can wipe the slate clean 
the blood of Jesus is the only way your sin can be forgiven. The blood of Jesus is the only way you can be set free from a condemning mind. The blood of Jesus is the only way you can be set free from the guilt of sin. The blood of Jesus is the only way you can be set free from the fear of death and the fear of hell. The blood of Jesus is the only way you can be set free from the power of Satan, the power of sin, and the power of this world. Only through the blood of Jesus. God wants you to change your mind today. God is coming to you with this message. And God is saying to you, put your faith in my son Jesus. Change your mind today. Renounce and denounce the mind that was deceived by Satan. And adopt and inherit the mind of Christ. God is saying to you today, if you are willing to think like my son Jesus Christ, I am more than willing to receive you as my own. The word of God is saying to you today, forsake the deception of Satan. You see, whatever excuse you have for not coming to a relationship with the living God through what Jesus did on the cross, you might be thinking that that's your own thinking yourself. But you inherited that thinking and that deception from our four and first parents, Adam and Eve. If I say to you, why are you not a Christian? Whatever reason, whatever excuse you come up with, that's that deception of the devil. That's the deception of Satan. But God is saying to you today, if you are willing to think like my son Jesus, if you are willing for my son to live in your hearts by faith, I will receive you as one of my own. You can come to the cross of Jesus. You can come to God the Father with prayer and in repentance. And you can say, Father, forgive my sins, especially the sin of unbelief. You can say, Father, wash me in the blood of your son. You can say, Father, I believe that Jesus is, the, is your son. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins to be forgiven so that I can be reconciled back to you. You can come before God and say that. You can come before God and your sins can be forgiven if you ask him to wash you in his blood. If you've never called on the name of Jesus, you can go home and you can call on the name of Jesus in the privacy of your own home in your own in the privacy of your own home in the comfort of your home you can call on the name of Jesus the word of God tells us that whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will never be ashamed if you call on the name of Jesus he will answer you you can change your mind from a rebellious mind inherited from Adam and Eve, from that stubborn mind inherited from Adam and Eve. And you can say, Father, I believe your word. You can say, Father, I put my faith and my trust in you through what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And that's how you begin a relationship with God by sorting out the trust issue. You see, because the reason why Adam and Eve ended up in a predicament is because Adam and Eve decided not to trust God anymore. And whenever you refuse to trust God in Jesus Christ, it's going to land you in a world of trouble. It will land you in a world of trouble. The only way you can reconcile with the true and the living God is when you put your faith in Jesus. The only way that you can ever have a relationship with the true and the living God 
is when you come to the cross of Jesus Christ because Jesus died and rose again the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is the resurrection of that spiritually dead humanity when God was raising Jesus from the dead he was raising you and me from the dead when God was raising Jesus Christ from the dead he was bringing back to life that relationship which died in the Garden of Eden the relationship between God and man when God was raising Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit God was bringing us back to life by the power of the same Holy Spirit you can come to the Lord Jesus in faith and you can say father I know that I was born a sinner the Bible says that we were born uh, enemies in our minds by wicked works but God has reconciled us to himself in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ God has come in flesh bones and blood and he's died on the cross to kill off the old man and his passions to kill off the old man and his appetites to kill off the old man and his sensualities to kill off the old man and his way of thinking so when the old man Adam is crucified on that cross and Jesus is put in the grave we were buried together with Jesus in baptism and when Jesus was risen from the dead we were all risen from the dead by the glory of the Father the day you believe that the day you put your faith in that the day you believe that you begin a relationship with the true and the living God because you see every one of us we yearn and we desire to be received in the arms of God if I were to ask you a question today and if I will say to you would you like God to receive you or do you want God to reject you Mommy. Yes, you're going to tell me you would rather be received in the arms of God if I were to ask you a question and I say would you, would you ever choose to be received by God or would you choose to be rejected by God? I know without a shadow of doubt you're going to say to me I would rather be received by God. Every single one of us we yearn to be received by God because we know that God is life. We know that God will help in the day of trouble. We know that God is love. We know that God is light. And every single one of us, we desire in our, in our hearts to be received by God. But how do we get to that? We are already received in the presence of God because Jesus Christ is ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father right now as we speak jesus christ is already gone ahead of you and when god received jesus into heaven he was receiving you into heaven we are told from the word of god that after Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, and risen from the dead, he showed himself to the people for a good 40 days. After that, he was lifted up into heaven, and Jesus went and sat at the right hand of God. When Jesus went and sat at the right hand of God, when Jesus was received into heaven, you, my friend, were received into heaven. The day Jesus ascended into heaven and went and sat at the right hand of the Father, that day your name was received into heaven. It's entirely up to you to honor the reception or to reject the reception. 
that one is basically entirely up to you. But the truth of the matter is, after Jesus had spoken to the disciples, he was physically lifted up into heaven, and Jesus went and sat at the right hand of God. And when Jesus went and sat at the right hand of God, he went into heaven on your behalf. Because God received Jesus Christ in heaven, it means God wants to receive you in heaven. Because Jesus Christ is received in the presence of the Father, it means that God wants to receive you in his presence. Think about it. One man dies and he takes the entire human race to hell with him. When Adam sinned against God, he sinned on the behalf of the entire human race. But when Jesus was ascended into heaven, and when Jesus went and sat at the right hand of the Father, Jesus went and sat in heaven on your behalf. Right now as we speak, on God, at God's table in heaven, there is a chair for you. Right now as we speak, in God's dining room in heaven, there is a place for you. Jesus went up into heaven as a man. He walked into heaven as a man. He was received through the pearly gates of heaven as a man. He went to the throne and sat at the right hand of the throne of God as a man. So because Jesus was accepted into heaven as a man, it means that man is now accepted in heaven. Before that, man was not accepted in heaven. Satan decided to rebel against God in heaven and Satan was kicked out of heaven and Satan took man down to hell with his rebellion. So man was not accepted in heaven because heaven is for holiness. But the day Jesus shed his blood for our cleansing, and the day Jesus was received up into heaven, it means that man is now received in heaven. The day Jesus Christ ascended into heaven and went and sat at the right hand of God, the day Jesus was received into heaven is the day you were received in heaven. The invitation is open. The invitation is to you and your family. The invitation is to you and your loved ones. God has already set a place for you. It's entirely up to you to accept it or to reject it. But you still have to make a choice. You have to make a choice to accept this invitation or to reject it. It's entirely up, you, up to you. It's your choice to make and yours alone. Because when you stand before God on the day of judgment, it's going to be your account to give and yours alone. When God accepted Jesus, God accepted you. When God received Jesus Christ into heaven, God received you. It's entirely up to yourself to make that decision. If you reject the invitation, then that's on you. If you accept the invitation, well, praise the Lord. But the decision is for you to make. You can come before God and say, Father, in Jesus' name, I know I was born outside of your presence. I know I was born outside of the Garden of Eden. I know I was born with the sinfulness of Adam in me. But I come to you in humility and repentance. And in the name of Jesus, I ask you to receive me. You can ask God to receive you and God will receive you. Because God has said that whosoever will come to him in the name of Jesus Christ, he shall in no and by no means cast away. God will never turn you away if you come to him asking him to receive you. He is ready to receive you with open arms. Yes, you're good boy, you're good. 
is ready to receive you. Because sins have been forgiven. You can come before God and say, Father, I know I was living a life of adultery, of fornication, of uncleanness, of lasciviousness, or a life that was full of immorality, immorality, but I come to you in Jesus' name, forgive my sins, wash my sins away, and receive me into your presence. Receive me into a relationship with you. Or you can go before God and say that. You can go before God and say, Father, forgive me for unbelief, for refusing to believe your word. But I come to you in Jesus' name and I ask you to forgive me and receive me. And God will receive you. Have you ever noticed how some of those are friends who are um, rejected or abandoned by their parents when, as they were young the, the struggle in life for those of us who were abandoned and rejected by family by parents by mother or father they just do life difficult it's not the easiest of life to live your life knowing that your own parents rejected you. This is why you see as we're growing up as children, we turn to our parents for acknowledgement, for validation. We turn to our parents because we want someone to receive us. And when the parents fail to receive their children, this is why you see the kids turning to gangs now. Because mommy and daddy was not either spending enough time with this child to make the child feel received. Kids will turn out the worst when they grow up knowing that my parents didn't love me. How many times have you ever had a kid go, the reason why I joined a gang is because I had no family. I had nobody to receive me. How many times have you ever had that? The reason why kids are going wild is because they feel they have no family. So what do they do? They go and join a gang. And they become a gang member. Because they wanted to belong. They wanted a family. They want a family so bad. They are willing to be jumped into the gang. You know what they say? Blood in, blood out. They want to belong somewhere so bad. Even that, even though they know that gun life is tough, they are willing to live that tough life as long as somebody receives them. Kids are so willing to join a gang, just someone can receive them. The reason why even as a humanity we go wild is because we were lied to. We were lied to by the snake called Satan into thinking that God would never receive us. When in actual fact God wants nothing more than to receive. God wants to receive you. That's why Jesus was lifted up into heaven, was received into heaven, and Jesus sat at the right hand of God. And yet the devil tells you that God will never receive you. And in Jesus Christ, God has already received you. 
because God received a man into heaven the man Jesus Christ God received Jesus into heaven on your behalf I said it before and I will say it again the reason why kids are joining gangs is because they want to feel that they belong somewhere the reason why kids join gangs and put up with the violence and put up with that kind of life is because they had no family so they say they had nobody to receive them they had nobody waiting for them with, with, uh, with open arms or so they think and so they join a gun that's a picture of humanity today that's a picture of humanity today the reason why we are so wild in our sins is because we think that God would never receive us the reason why we go haywire and our sins is because we think that God would never receive us when in actual fact God is more than willing and ready to receive you and God has already received you when he received Jesus into heaven when Jesus was lifted up into heaven and went and sat at the right hand of God God was receiving you you can accept the invitation or you can reject it that's entirely up to you but God in Jesus Christ is more than willing to receive you you can go before God and you can ask him you can ask him and he will receive you And do you know what God will do once he's received you? As soon as God receives you, he will place his Holy Spirit in your soul. He will place his Holy Spirit in your soul so that the two of you can relate. He will place his Holy Spirit in your soul so that the two of you can get to know each other. He will place the Holy Spirit in your soul so that you can begin to know the things which are freely given to you of God you can never live the life of God without the Spirit of God in your soul the day God receives you in the reception of Jesus Christ he will place his Holy Spirit in your soul I know because a lot of people, I get people come to me and they're asking me the question like, how come we don't feel the presence of God? How come even after I've prayed, I don't feel the peace or the love or the joy of God in me? Get the Holy Spirit of God in you. You can go home after all this. You can close the door. And you can say, God, I want to receive your spirit. You can ask God to deposit his Holy Spirit in your soul if you ask him in the name of Jesus. If you ask him in the name of Jesus, he will do it for you. Would you like a brother? Leave with bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart. Then leave with the Spirit of God in your heart. Would you rather continue your life with all kinds of addictions and all kinds of crazy habits that you're so trying to break free from but can't seem to be able to break free from these things? Or would you rather live with the Spirit of God in your soul?
so you can live your life with the peace of God in you and you can know by the Holy Spirit that you are a child of God the day God receives you he will receive you and he will begin to put right the things that got you ejected in his presence in the first place the reason why humanity was ejected from the presence of God in the first place is because of unbelief sins like adultery fornication uncleanness blasphemy righteous living debauchery and all of that those are as a result of unbelief but the reason why humanity got sent out of the presence of god to begin with was because of unbelief and the day that you get right with god through jesus the day that you are received in the presence of god god will begin to put right what went wrong in the first place hello Hi. whatever it is that saw you out of the presence of god the day you come back into a relationship with god god will place his holy spirit in your soul and god will begin to work from the inside out the only way you can know if you're a child of God is if you have the Spirit of God in you. Just like the way you can know if that's your child you've got with you there is because of your seed in them. If that kid doesn't have your DNA, they are not your child. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you are not his child. You can only be a child of God if you have the Spirit of God in you. If I were to have kids today, those kids will have my DNA and they will be called by my name. And so, if you're a child of God, you should have the Spirit of God in you. You should have the Spirit of God in you. It's only by the Holy Spirit. That's how you will know that you are a child of God. It's only by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can testify to you that you are a child of God. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can testify to you that you have a relationship with God. You can never be called a child of God if you don't have the Spirit of God in you. You have to remember that there is a day coming. It's called the Day of Judgment. And on the day of judgment, every single one of us will come before God and will give an answer to how we responded to the gospel message. Every single one of us. The priest will not speak for you on that day because the priest will answer for their own. There is no prophet who will answer for you on that day because the prophet will be answering for their own sins. There is no pastor, there is no leader who will ever be able to answer. You will have to answer for yourself. And the word of God will never fall to the ground. How you respond to the gospel message when your life comes to an end and you find yourself before God you find yourself before God this is what God will ask you when you heard the gospel message how did you respond did you turn your back on the gospel or did you respond in faith 
the day your life comes to an end, you don't come back as a different person. If that's what they told you, they lie to you. There's no such thing as reincarnation. You will stand before God and you will receive your judgment. Whether you believe in it or not, when you come face to face with God, you will receive your judgment. Jesus said that for those who tell, those who shall confess me before man, I will confess them before my Father which is in heaven. But those who deny me before men, I will deny them before my Father which is in heaven. What's stopping you from confessing the Lord Jesus? What's stopping you from confessing that Jesus is the Son of God? What's stopping you from confessing that Jesus died for your sin, for my sin? What's stopping you from confessing that Jesus died and rose again? You know the day that your life comes to an end and you find yourself before God? Before you even open your mouth to either defend yourself or whatever, your conscience will speak for or against you. The way you've lived your life will either speak for you or against you. And we can never lie to God. God sees everything. God knows the feelings in your heart. He knows the thoughts in your mind. And when we stand before God in the day of judgment, you are going to receive your judgment. I want you to take that home with you. The day your life comes to an end, you are going to receive your judgment before God. the blood of Jesus into the very foundations of the town of Oldham for mass evangelism, for soul winning, for the preaching of the gospel. The will of God is that we should all come to the knowledge of the truth and not perish. I speak the blood of Jesus into the very atmosphere and the heavens above Oldham for the pulling down of those demonic strongholds holding you back from confessing and committing to the Lord Jesus. I speak the blood of Jesus Christ into the heart and soul of Oldham for the receiving of the Holy Spirit. I speak the blood of Jesus into the homes of the people of Oldham for the peace of God to rule and reign in the homes of the people of Oldham. In Jesus' name.